The magical moments of mountain biking, when everything's in line and everything's perfect, can be near transcendental in their levels of escapism. However, it can all come crashing down when there's a weird squeak, creak, or err. We're going to work through systematically a way of finding that mystery squeak and get that balance and peace back on your bike. We're going to spin the front wheel and have a listen because that's a great way of finding out if the rotor is warped or maybe it's got a bit of a bend in it and it's out true. We're then going to look at the pad alignment, we're going to look at the caliper alignment and see how worn stuff is, but let's try that sound first. Yeah, it's not great, is it? But with a simple rotor true, uh, checking the alignment of the caliper, that will not make noise in the stand, but it will definitely honk and make noise when you're riding, just because the pads won't be squeezing parallel. Um, we'll also look at how worn the pads are, because when the pads start to get worn, sometimes they can make noise. It's all pretty simple, but it just takes some patience to get fixed. Systematically, we've done the front spinny thing, now we're gonna do the rear spinny thing. So we're just gonna have a listen yeah, it's really not great. There's a lot of squeaky noises. And obviously these are more obvious ones because you'll hear them all the time when you're riding versus just at random. With this one, it sounds like uh, an out of true rotor. Again, simple enough to fix. It also sounds like the pads are a bit worn. So we're gonna inspect those and have a look. If the pads are really worn, what can often happen is that the pistons can push out a really long way. Um, so they'll need to be reset for you to give you space to put in new pads with new, more pad material. And often it's best practice to give the brakes a bleed as well. With brakes and brake rub, it's, they're kind of easy to track down because you can hear them all the time. And I know what some of the keyboard warriors will be saying already, and that's like, these are easy fixes. And you're right, they are, but we need to get them out of the way first. Next problems are much easier trickier to track down, but we'll be really systematic and we'll go step by step and we'll try and find those mysterious creeks. The first ones are really easy to break down into seated ones. And you've got sort of two things happening here. You've got seated and coasting, so you're not applying any power to the cranks or drivetrain. And then you've got seated and pedaling. We're gonna work through these systematically. So first up is seated and coasting. Okay, so we're looking at seated squeaks, but not whilst pedaling, so while coasting. So you're not applying any force through the pedals or the drivetrain. Okay, so this one is one where you're gonna have to work through step by step. Um, it could be the, the saddle itself, sometimes where they're inserted, you've got this kind of metal or carbon rail, more so with the, the metal rails, sometimes this insertion point in the back can get a little bit crusty, so you might have to clean it. And there's gonna be a theme and mantra that I'm gonna talk about a lot, which is sort of like assess, clean, and re-grease. And, and that mantra works through all of the points on a, on a bike, and especially in this seated section. So work through, look at the clamp bolts here, so you're gonna to have to double check which ones you need. There's a variety of different clamps, uh, whether they be two pinch bolts uh, or there'd be one as well. Do make sure that when you kind of like have a look and listen to those creaks as you kind of twist parts around, it could be as something as simple as the rails in their, uh, the clamp area here, just having a bit of dirt. And as you're sat on the bike, that dirt and probably lack of correct torque here will allow for a bit of movement and that movement will make noise. That's the, the second theme, I guess. So work through, work from the top down. Assuming you've got a dropper post, again, make sure that the dropper post is all tight and working. Uh, also, just cycle it through and just check that it's working. Often they've got these little collars. Okay, great example here. This collar is a little bit loose. So what I'd probably do is do this same mantra of clean, assess, grease. And we'll do that with all the moving parts. So clamp collar, there's a lot of variety here. This one's kind of a more classic wraparound, but you might have a wedge clamp. Um, wedge clamps often do need a little bit more attention because there's simply more moving parts with them. Just be really, really mindful that often they're not captive, so they're not held by the frame. So as soon as you pull that seat post out, you can have the really awkward moment of that clampy wedgy thingy dropping into your frame. Don't ask me now how I, how I know about that, but I do, and it's unfortunate. So just make sure you've got an Allen key on it at least to catch it. And with that, much like you will do with this clamp here, remove it, give it a clean, re-grease some of the parts. I'm talking about grease, and you've got to use the right stuff in the right places. So if you've got metal on metal, 
by all, all means use whatever you've got. If you've got some thicker lithium grease or you've got some assembly grease, that's great stuff. However, with carbon frames and carbon seat posts or with alloy frames and carbon seat posts or more commonly where you've got a carbon frame and an alloy seat post, make sure that you use the assembly paste. Uh, the assembly paste is, is similar to lots of other greases where it creates a barrier layer between the parts so you're not going to get corrosion and you're also going to not get as much grit in there which is going to make this noise. But with the assembly paste, the dedicated sort of carbon assembly paste, you've actually got some grit in there already. And no, this isn't to kind of like make noise already, it's just to aid grip. Often carbon uh, frames inside are ridiculously smooth and the clamping force that, that you need to, to hold it in place would be really, really high and in some cases that can make the dropper post not work. So using this assembly paste means that you can keep within the torque ratings of both the, the seat clamp, the band on style here, and the, the dropper post. Now we're gonna go to Seated Creek's Pedaling Edition. Subtleties are there, and the big thing is that we're gonna apply power through the drivetrain, so we're gonna look through all of those parts uh, one by one to try and find where those creeks could be. Um, we're gonna start at the bottom um, with the pedal. Pedals have a really tough life. They get bashed on roots, they get bashed on rocks, they get smashed through rock gardens, and they have to endure mud baths on a regular occasion. So I would recommend giving your pedals a service. Most pedals are really easy to service. They might look relatively complex, but the bearings inside are probably pretty easy to get to, and would definitely welcome some more grease, which you might have washed out, hopefully hasn't. Uh, if you're really engaged, there's videos on how to service the pedals. Most pedals, good pedals, will have service kits available, and it's well worth doing, because a lot of creaks can come from those, so that's our starting point. So next up in the drivetrain and the, the creek edition is we're going to look at where the pedal attaches to the crank. Make sure that's tight, uh, make sure it's greased as well. I mean it's a tricky one to check and actually if you haven't greased it it might be an absolute bugger to get the pedal off but it's a good reminder to grease your pedals before you put them onto the cranks. Moving up through the crank, make sure that the chainring bolts are tight. Okay this is a, a three bolt from memory, or it could be eight bolts, and we've got two different versions. But make sure that those bolts on the other side of the, of the crank are all tightened up. If you've got kind of like traditional four bolt or five bolt chain rings, make sure that those are tight. Next, we've got a bit of a sticky problem, which is bottom brackets. There's a large variety of different bottom brackets, and it can be a source of lots of creaks. And the reason why is that, well, all your power is going through it. It's also because it can be echoing through the kind of hollow structure of the frame, be it alloy or, or carbon. So best case scenario is just to check it quickly. Uh, with this one, we'll just pop the chain off and have a look. With the chain out of the way, this should spin freely and really silently. Unfortunately, it sounds a little bit like someone sawing at wood, and that's indicative that the bearings aren't in a happy place. With the cranks out, you can inspect those bearings Maybe if they're not sort of completely crusty and completely muddied, you might be able to rescue them. Be mindful that not all bottom brackets actually have serviceable bearings. It's a bit of a shame, but some of the bigger brands uh, have basically sealed cartridge bearings and they've got kind of fragile plastic covers on that mean you can't access them. Other systems do allow you to kind of pop off rubber seals and top up the grease. If you've got one of the, the bigger manufacturer's ones with these sort of plastic covers that you can't remove, it's just new bottom bracket time. Final place to look, it's often overlooked and that's because it's off bike. It's actually your shoes and the cleat interface. Um, different pedal systems obviously use different cleat systems and how they load is different. So some of the Shimano style or fun style pedals, for example, use a dedicated metal cleat and that loads against the, the pedal. With some of the Crank Brothers and some other different systems out there, the shoe actually loads onto the, the pedal. So that means that where the load is happening is in a different place. And if those interfaces are worn or aren't quite as they should be, um, and they can move or squeak, well, as I've said, you'll get noise from them. So make sure all those interfaces on your shoes, they're greased and the cleats aren't too worn. And with Crank Brothers or other systems like that, make sure that the, the pad tabs where the, the shoe is loading the pedal is clean as well, because you can be surprised about how much noise you'll be able to get from pedals as well. 
With out of saddle pedaling efforts, there's a lot more dynamics about the bikes and a lot more opportunity, unfortunately, for squeaks and creaks. First point of call is the rear mech. Some clutch systems can work against the mech itself and actually back out that main bolt. So just make sure, as if you don't know the mantra already, of inspect, grease, and torque up to the manufacturer's setting. Really mindful, especially on rear mechs. Some mechs have got clutches, which are really good. Some of those clutches can be taken apart and adjusted. Sometimes the squeaks can come from those. So a quick way would be to turn the clutch off, cycle the suspension, have a listen, see if you can hear it, put the clutch back on and again, cycle the suspension. If it's squeaking, even though they're really well sealed, sometimes what you'll need to do is just disassemble that part and re-grease it. You can also buy spares for some brands of clutches too. Next in line in drivetrain checks, especially out of the saddle, is to check your cassette. Obviously, the amount of torque that you're putting through, even though you haven't got that much power, is humongous with the massive chain rings that you have on the back now. So yeah, again, remove, clean all the splines, and it's slightly controversial because I think some mechanics don't like to do it. I mean, my recommendation is to do do it, and that's grease the splines, whether you're running an XD, HG, or micro spline, just a small film of grease will help a lot. Definitely make sure that you grease up the lock nut. So when you tighten it up to that 40 Newton meters of torque, you're definitely getting 40 Newton meters of torque. What can sometimes happen if you're not applying grease, especially to these high load parts, is that actually the materials as you're tightening them can just bind a little bit. So whilst you're thinking it's really tight, effectively you've just got metal on metal just gouging into each other. Actually, potentially while the cassette's off, but it doesn't have to be, it's to check the free hub. There's lots of different iterations here with lots of different pores and, and star ratchet systems, but all of those systems rely on springs and some kind of like ratchety paddly thing. And all of those systems will need to be as you guessed it, they'll need to be clean and greased correctly. So whilst you're at the back of the bike, take the free hub apart. Sometimes they've got very, very, very tiny springs in and very small pulls, which often have a habit of being sucked underneath the largest or heaviest object that's in your workshop. So do be careful. Next thing of point uh, to be careful about is using the right grease. Don't just slather it with really thick grease that you might have used on your seat post. Um, the springs aren't super strong and the pores have to move just a small amount. So really thick, sticky grease can mean that you'll have a free coaster hub, i.e. it won't ever catch because the grease will just be holding it together. Um, personally, I've used oil, really light oil, really successfully, but often brands have dedicated lubricants for their own free hubs. A good example might be actually you could use suspension assembly grease. That's really smooth. It's not overly viscous, so it will still allow the springs and pores to work as they should do. So just before you reassemble you know, the back end of the bike and the, the last bit of the drivetrain, one last area to check is your mech hanger. The UDH that SRAM have developed is really good uh, and is generally creak free, but just double check that it's torqued up. If you've got the probably million of different other uh, mech hanger options out there. Make sure that the two tiny bolts or three tiny bolts or one tiny bolt is tightened correctly. Again, it's one of those ones where we really need to be sure that we're cleaning it, greasing it uh, as well, because if we just swing off it like a gorilla, we might end up snapping it. And those little bolts do a lot in terms of holding a rear mech on, and they're really important, but they're very easy to break. So just make sure that the mech hanger is tight before you assemble the rest of the bike. Hopefully we've covered going. So the next important thing is to cover stopping. So we've covered looking at brake pads and looking at brake alignment, but also mindful to look at the mounting hardware. So mounting hardware on the fork and checking that that's actually all done up and also checking whether you've got like this one, you've got a center lock. This one's actually center lock and a six bolt adapter. Again, checking that this is all tight and not rattling around and not moving because as we've said, any kind of movement can equal noise. Moving up from the caliper, make sure that any hose clamps are tight as well. They can provide a bit of rattle, so make sure that's tight. And some levers have got small linkages in, and it's quite easy for those linkages to dry out a little bit, especially if you're kind of a bit overzealous with the jet wash and the cleaning products. So yeah, just check it, have a listen. Uh, if it's squeaking a lot, what I'd recommend is probably a drip of uh, light oil, maybe like a wax-based one would be good, so it leaves a nice residue. 
it's quite tempting to just blast away with an aerosol can of either cleaning product and then kind of like a, a protect and shine style product. And those can be really good, but just be really mindful of masking off any overspray, because if you get any of that overspray on the, on the rotor and on the pads, well, you've just given yourself another squeak. So front brake related, you can use that to identify other squeaks. Sat on the bike, if you just sort of pull the front brake and rock the bike back and forth, have a listen for more squeaks. If you've made sure that it's not the lever itself squeaking, and you've made sure that it's not the, the rotor, unfortunately, it's probably something to do with either the headset in here, or the stem and bar interface, or the stem and steerer interface. If you can feel a little bit of play, the best way to track this down is to turn the bar through 90 degrees, again, apply that front brake, and then just push on the bike. If the headset's loose, or it's lacking a bit of preload, hopefully it's only just preload, you'll notice that there's a bit of a clunky sound. Uh, and often that means, hopefully, it just needs a little bit more preload. So undo the stem bolt or any additional stem clamps uh, and tighten up that preload cap to pull everything together. If the headset bearing then sounds like you're cutting wood with a kind of like soaring sound, or it's really stiff to move, or it's kind of making a slight clunky sound and it's stepped, it probably means that the bearings are deadville. You might be able to bring them back to life, but if they're really brown and if they're really clunky, it's gonna be much less mess, mildly more expensive, but just to replace those bearings. If you're confident that the headset is okay enough for today's ride, hopefully it doesn't sound like you're cutting wood, um, the next place to look for and track down those creaks is between the bar and the stem and the stem and the steerer. Um, now this is one place where often, I've said with every other part, essentially slather grease on it and that will help. Well, with the bar and stem interface especially, make sure you're not putting grease on it. Assembly paste, yes, with that extra grip for extra traction and lower torque, or correct torque, but more, more grip. Um, and especially on the steer tube and, and stem interface, again, if it's a carbon steerer and you've got a really jazzy bike, the assembly, the carbon assembly paste is a good option. If it's alloy, we don't want any grease on that interface. We want kind of metal on metal to be sure that we can get it up to torque. Where we do need grease, uh, and it's I think really important and often overlooked, is on the bolts itself, so the threads as they go in. Often the, the stem bolts have got a small sort of like concave little cup. So as all of those parts tighten up, again, it's this kind of like clean, degrease, regrease, and torque up to the right settings mantra that we've talked about. It can be something as small as a little bit of grit in here, and as you're honking on the bars out of the saddle, it will creak. So make sure all of this assembly is nice and clean, torqued up to the right settings. If you've done all of those things, and the headset's new and fresh, but you're still getting a bit of a weird noise, again, turn those bars 90 degrees and really lean on the bike. If it creaks, turn it kind of all the way around to kind of as if you're riding the bike. Again, apply the front brake and push again really hard with lots of force as if you're about to compress the fork. If you're getting a creak, it could be the CSU. So that's the interface here between the steer tube and the crown. Some forks, I've noticed it more on e-bikes, um, unfortunately. It just means that you'll have to get a new assembly, basically. Sorry, it's quite expensive. Okay, we've worked through almost all the moving parts, except, well, except you. Uh, no, I'm not talking about your clicky knees or your slightly dodgy back that makes you go, ah, at certain points. No, I'm talking about you on the bike and how when you ride and you're dynamic on the bike, it's gonna load the bike up in different ways. I guess first port of call is gonna be the quick releases or the axles and through axles, because as you load the bike in kind of like a sideways, if you're crossing it off camber, for example, it's gonna load those points. So make sure those are, as you know from the mantra, they're cleaned, probably degreased, re-greased and done up to those manufacturer's torque recommended settings. So with those out of the way, we're gonna look at the other parts of the bike that can kind of move when you're reload dynamic on a bike, such as on off-camber sections. With a hardtail, hopefully there's nothing moving. And now if there is a creak, continual creak on your bike, especially on off-camber sections, make sure that you really look at all your frame junctions. That's often where things start to crack or start to release, let's say. So on a hardtail, do a thorough frame inspection. And if there's any hairline kind of paint nicks or scratches in suspicious, tube junctions, I would say kind of around the head tube or maybe around the bottom bracket, maybe take it to a bike shop for them to cast an expert eye on whether your frame is fortunately deadsville or not. 
Okay, with a suspension bike, we've got loads of pivots to look at, and all of those points can be points where we're gonna get movement not in the plane or the direction that the bike was intended to, and that, as we know now, can create noise, and noise must be banished. Thankfully, suspension designers have helped us quite a lot, and they go through a really nice process of designing really big bearings where there's the most load. So start with the big bearings, that's often around the kind of main pivot junction here, and then work your way through all the pivots. Obviously, if it's got a flex pivot, there's not a lot that you can do in terms of uh, looking after that, but with all the other parts where you've got either bushings or bearings or a combination of bushing and bearings, it's that same mantra of cleaned, re-greased and done up to the manufacturer's torque recommended settings. If you're still getting annoying noises that are crushing your zen on your rides, there's probably one place last to look, and that's cable rub. Um, lots of cables can make tiny little squeaky noises as they're moving and as they're cycling. So just make sure that all those cables, if they're coming in contact with either the frame or with other cables, that they've got some protection. You've got options here, you can zip tie cables together. It's not my favorite one because sometimes you need those cables to move, especially if they're crossing over. My preferred option is that classic of mechanics, the 3M Mastic Tape. You can use it really well everywhere to eliminate lots of cable rub and a lot of cable noises. Hopefully we've eliminated the noise. Now, depending on what conditions you ride in, and it's, we're sort of in extremes of where these things can happen. So if it's really wet and grotty and muddy, like it is in the UK a lot of the time, or conversely, it's kind of like dry and arid and dusty, at both those extremes, you can get lots of creaks. So you might have to work through this sort of noise cancellation, zen enhancement process fairly regularly. But once you've got it down pat, you'll work out where your particular bike starts to make creaky noises early on. You'll be able to limit them and bring that wonderful, magical zen moment back to your mountain biking.